Look, keep him busy. Entertain him. <laughs> this is my pink dinosaur. I'm working on painting the little white bits, the horns. This is my other one. The one that Ryan was talking about previously. I'm going to be painting it this color, this pretty little blue. Sure, but you can look at it and we can compare it to you know our couch. You can see how much bigger it is than the one with the couch. It's twice the size. Um, it's pretty close This is Ryan's fish. Try not to get any paint on it.
Slurp them. You gotta slurp oysters. Yep. So, Angel's keeping it busy. I'm not really saying much because I don't know what to say. <laughs> but I'm occasionally showing them the progress of our dinosaurs. Staff person Carl, because all of this is 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so you can see the lower jaw and the upper part of the head were separate pieces, the fins on the bottom are separate piece. And then so it was displayed. So all the little joints in there that we gotta run through and the tail. Because I feel like this guy so probably got printed off as one big one. Very fast, and it doesn't like it doesn't want to. You can see it's kind of like it's not like painting like super or solidly over it, so I'm having to do like really thin small layers, like and then wait for it to dry. And so I definitely think I might have like taken too much paint, so I'm gonna try and use all that so I don't mess with it. I think I might do another coat and it's done, trying to get the horns a little like more white. And then I don't really know what else. Yeah, because I painted it pink first, I didn't really think about the horns um, being white. So I'm trying to like paint it looks like white air mm -hmm. yeah. I'll just have to do like more like white paint over it to kind of paint over the paint that was already painted but I didn't really think about it. This looks like so solid and stuff but this one looks like it's very is it, It's probably printed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's printed black. Yeah, this one is printed black. This one is printed white. And so the black shows through a lot better, like, when you do the paint, and so you have to do, like, a few more coats than with just the white. Yeah, what I gotta do is I gotta get my, my eye painted yet. So okay. Dunkley Osteus is kind of a cool little thing around their eye. They have what's called a scleral bone. Um, went extinct about 380 million years ago. <laughs> it's, um, older it's older than dinosaurs. Dinosaurs didn't exist yet when this thing already went extinct. First dinosaurs are about 300 or so million. Where's the bag? It's right here. Is it? Because I don't want to do this one bag. Well, you I only found one bag. Seriously. Yeah. Sure. You can you <laughs> can share the bag. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. I don't really don't like pink with those two Right? Yeah, normally I'm not a huge pink person either, but I thought like it's all kind of fun. Yeah, you got the nice the beak a little bit different color and the horns. <laughs> I'm gonna show off my dinosaur. <laughs> Through here. Grandma, come on. Oh. No, I actually oh my gosh, here, but today I'm just walking. Bye. Bye. See Thank you guys. guys. Thanks for visiting. Alright. I'm sure the crowd watching is thrilled with me sitting here painting them. <laughs> Not how you. Check on squarespace.com for a free trial.
And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash animal logic to save 10% off your first purchase on the website or your page. Start launching project today. So they don't really technically have teeth. The Dunkelosteus swam around the Devonian Sea about 100 million years before dinosaurs even existed. In fact, at the time, there were no terrestrial vertebrates at all. The Devonian was one of six periods of the larger Paleozoic era, which saw a huge radiation of fish, which is why it's appropriately dubbed the Age of Fishes, or as I like to call it, Big Ol' Fish Time. <laughs> the toughest of these fishes were the Clapoderms, a class of large, bony, armored fishes. Dunkelosteus was a genus of placoderms, and with at least 10 different species, it was both the most famous and most varied. The largest species, Dunkelosteus terrelli, that we're focusing on today, reached lengths of 6 meters. That's the size of an orca. Weighing around 1,000 kilograms, Dunkelosteus terrelli was among the largest known Devonian animals. With a mouth over a meter wide and armored plates almost five centimeters thick, this fish was a real tank. Dunkelosteus terrelli was first discovered by amateur paleontologist Jay Terra and his son in 1867 on the shale cliffs of Lake Erie in Ohio. In 1930, David Dunkel, a paleontologist at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, found additional fossils, and so the combo moniker of Dunkelosteus terrelli was born. Terra dubbed his find the terrible fish. At the time, terrible was used to mean causing terror, and terror causing this fish certainly was. Thanks to its bladed, jaws of life like jaws, Dunkelosteus had an extremely powerful bite. Um, it was capable of opening its mouth 45 degrees and could snap its jaws shut. Is it right below us there? 7,400 newtons. It takes just about 4,000 newtons of force to break a femur, the strongest bone in the human body. Their bite was almost twice as powerful as the famous bone-crushing hyena. It was even stronger than today's lions, black bears, and even spotted hyenas. Only very large alligators and dinosaurs could chop down harder than a Dunkelosteus. If they ever do a sequel to the Meg, it should be called the Dunk. Hey, Dunkelosteus you... didn't have teeth, but rather two blade-like protrusions flanked by self-sharpening jawbones. Not only were these bony plates perfect for slaying and dicing, the simple act of opening and closing its jaws ensured that they stayed sharp as knives. So basically, the jaws of Dunkelosteus were both killing machines and whetstones in one. With that kind of efficiency, you can call them Swiss Army Jaws. The jaw action of the Dunkelosteus is part of the reason it became the top predator in its environment. Its jaws were not only extremely powerful when slamming shut, but also ridiculously quick to open. So how do we know how fast it could open and close its jaws if it's been dead for hundreds of millions of years? In the case of Dunkelosteus, researchers used biomechanical modeling to reconstruct how it works. Instead of relying on modern relatives to give a comparative understanding of how extinct creatures moved, biomechanics of fossil creatures leaned on the laws of physics. Some things never change, and that certainly applies to the physical laws of ancient fish bites. Biomechanical modeling is done to make predictions about things that can't be observed, like just how fast a long extinct fish can open and shut its jaws. This study revealed that Dunkelosteus' jaws opened in the meaning it may have even been taking advantage of the suction of the jaws yeah. So what we were talking about a little bit here. So it's almost like we're talking about some sort of bigger concepts around the fossils. One of the questions we always get at the time was the apex predator of the seas and was able to eat basically whatever it wanted. Sharks, fish, even the armor of other creatures was an enormous match for those guillotine-like mouth blades. 
is what we're seeing. Fossils of the dunk have been found with scars and wounds from <laughs> other dunkalosteus. Nothing there. So members of this ferocious species weren't even safe from their own siblings. The armor of Dunkelosteus was formed of many interlocking plates, but only covered the head and neck of the fish. Their bodies were either naked or covered in small scales, which would have decayed quickly. This meant that often only the front portions of Dunkelosteus were fossilized, making it harder for us to get the full picture of these enormous fish. Another complicating factor is that the plates would often fall apart when the fish died making it hard to puzzle them back together. A few fossil examples, however, do exist to show just how the plates fit together when the fish was alive. So why don't we have giant armored fish today snapping at our legs at the beach? Scientists believe that two separate events of low ocean oxygen levels during the Devonian were responsible for the extinction of all carpenters, including Dunkelosteus. Basically, they all suffocated. One recent study linked this latter mass extinction called the Hangenberg event to UV radiation entering through a hole in the ozone layer. Let's just hope we can put the brakes on our own human caused climate change before we set off another mass extinction event. Yeah. So what should we talk about next? Please let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later. Dunkleosteus were the terrifying placoderm fish from the late Devonian, 
It existed so long ago that life was just getting its start on land. It had very unique features not seen on Earth today. Before we talk about this amazing brute, let's talk about its evolution first. Dunkleosteus was a placoderm. Placodermy is a class of armored prehistoric fish which lived from the Solarian to the Earth of the Bellian about 430 to 358 million years ago. They were very unique in a few ways. Their head and thorax were covered by articulated armor plates, and the rest of the body was scaled or naked, depending on the species. Placoderms were among the first jawed fish. Their jaws likely evolved from the first of their gill arches. Placoderms are thought to be paraphyletic, consisting of several distinct outgroups or sister taxa to all living jawed vertebrates, which originated from their ranks. This means that placoderms are likely the ancestors of everything from dinosaurs to people. This is illustrated by a 419 million year old fossil, Entelognathus from China. It is the only known placoderm with a type of bony jaw like that is found in modern bony fishes. This includes a dentary bone, which is found in humans and other tetrapods. The jaws and other placoderms were simplified and consisting of a single bone. Placoderms were also the first fish to develop pelvic fins, closer to hind limbs and tetrapods, as well as true teeth. Another thing to note about these true teeth is that they actually evolved from scales. So next time you brush your teeth, you should know that you're really just brushing modified scales. This is why the Devonian and other periods around this time are so interesting. They show us how fundamental traits of life on Earth came to be. Placodermy was a really diverse order which controlled much of the ecosystem at the time. It consisted of armored predators of all sizes and even a giant whale-like filter feeder. 